was cut at the age of 10 years. Imagine you being held by 10 women and you are just at the age of 10 years old. You are struggling. The circumciser was my grandmother actually. They were asking, even including my mom. But this is what we also went through. And everybody else is going through. Are you different? Why are you running away from your culture? Well, away from that, a section of elected leaders from the Courier community in Migori County have come out to strongly defend female genital mutilation, FGM, saying... To treat it as anti-education, anti-development, FGM is anti this No, it's a little injury to transit. <laughs> yeah, just, it, it signifies transition. There's no reason that young girls should suffer genital mutilation. These traditions may date back centuries. They have no place in the 21st century. In July 2017, five girls from Kisumu Girls High School, Kisumu County, designed an application to fight FGM. They made global headlines when they emerged Africa's winners in the Technovation Contest. This application was built in 12 weeks, the basic. I don't think they understand what our mentor Dorcas calls as blood, sweat and tears. Everyone was talking about how we met the president, how we got to America, how we've created a great app and how it's going to help people. But no one was talking about how is it going to reach people. So what next? Can an application really make a difference? In Kisumu, Kenya's Lakeside County, female genital mutilation may not be a pressing concern. The prevalence rate is slightly higher than 1%. But that does not mean that no one cares. The restorers, members of LakeUp, one of Western Kenya's biggest technology hubs, designed iCut to get as many people as possible involved. The app is meant to help, rescue, report, give information, send donations and give feedback. It was initially meant to go live in February 2018. It still hasn't. It's not that simple. The girls still have so much to do. There is a backstory that didn't make the headlines. My name is Stacia Thiambo. I am an ex Kisumu girl student. Dorcas came to our school and she introduced Technovation to us where we look for solutions to problems in our community. So as I looked back, there was a moment where um, the problem of female genital mutilation was aired as a documentary um, sometimes back, and people really got to talk about it. But if we look at it really, did it stop? I'm Makrina King. I'm in Kisumu Girls. I'm 16 years old. It's not a must. Um, you go through the cut so that you can move from uh, childhood to adulthood. I'm Cynthia, well, I'm 17 years old. FGM ca can end, because if we carry out a lot of mass education, uh, we try to like advise people in individually, the ones who are doing this, think, yeah, we'll come to an end. I am Purity Christine. Female genital mutilation has caused so many deaths of very young girls. I had a friend quite some years back who dropped out of school and had to go through forced marriage. Now that the communities that practice it take it as a rite of passage. Purity tells us it was Ivy who was first to front the idea of FGM. But why? Uh, we call ourselves uh, Restorers because we restore hope. Uh, for the future, we we'll like to launch it, then other countries to start to also start using it, like Somalia, Ethiopia, not only Kenya that practice FGM, but also other countries in Africa, even Asian countries. Even though the girls didn't win the overall prize at the global competition in San Francisco in the United States, the ultimate prize would be the application fulfilling its intended purpose. If we look at our application at this particular moment, iCart is really, I can call it basic, so it needs sophistication. And if you want to bring in on board more developers, 
people who will market for us, who will just help us really get to the ground. We get that it's really, really expensive. So like, if we can get more funds to like fund this, because it's all for a very good cause. After we develop it better, it will be SMS based. So all these people who are found are where FGM is rampant. It's in the rural areas where internet is not good. They will get it. West Pokot County is largely remote. Driving further from the administrative town of Kapenguria, it becomes more rural and remote, cut off from amenities such as stable electricity and even mobile network connectivity. Hello. Toki. Ongea kuhusu mambo ya network hapa. Sio mzuri vile. Sababu kuna sehemu zingine network inapatikana sehemu zingine haipatikani. Sana sana ukitoka kama mkutano mpaka Kajeliba even though the Kenyan Demographic Health Survey has no specific and accurate data on prevalence of FGM for the Pokot community, local NGOs estimate that at least 7 out of 10 girls have undergone the cut. Susan Krop lives here. At the age of 13, she underwent the cut. It changed her life completely. <laughs> Hata mbaka wenisangu ni nitairiwa nae, walipitia mambo mingo, sabu unatairiwa marampili. Unatairiwa ya kwanza, wanachop kila mali, ya pili, unaenda tena kutairiwa kwa chini. Wakati umetoka kwa mawe, unaenda kuchini, unatairiwa tena. Ilisikia uchungu, sana. Na vile tena uchungu yangu kukwe ya pili, wakati sasa miu niliwache shule. A girl who has not been cut becomes a social outcast. Even if she gets married, she is still considered a child and will not be allowed to perform duties in the homestead. I first met her in October 2016 in Kongelai. She and the women of the Komesi Women's Network were rallying support to build a safe house for affected girls. They had been running a temporary shelter for those who are fleeing their homes. Two years later, she and her team have made great progress. The permanent safe house is almost complete. But the girls who come here bear enormous needs. So far, they have rescued 81 girls and counting. Day and day. But Susan is worried about the changing trend of the cutting season. Moses Mashar, a trained nurse, is a senior officer with the county health management team. The most affected area is the Gachalipa site and Sigor and part of south, which is including Urtu, area of Urtu, Chepar area, where it's still affected. Uh, most recently, the administration has been uh, serious about it, but still the practice is on. Hemorrhaging, septic shock, 
lesions, fistula, and complications during labor are just a fraction of the many consequences of the most severe type 2 and type 3 cut that are referred to this facility. Bleeding is the most common here, so we normally refer them to elderly. Yes, especially when the gynecological uh, issues and problems. We normally refer them. We don't, we don't have a gynecologist here. We have our local radios. We normally do barasas, especially that's my docket, where we normally do some arrangement and uh, uh, for the uh, small airtime we may have in terms of the budget, we allocate for those cases. And it's not only the FGM, but uh, including other diseases. Susan and the other women she works with at the Commercial Women's Network have not heard about iCut or the work that the restorers are doing. None of them have a smartphone. They're not familiar with applications. One of the girls' mentors from Lake Up shows the application to them. At first, there are a lot of doubts. In the event a girl is to be rescued, what are the chances that a person will first use an application to report and get help? Can it have a bearing on culture, especially in a rural area? Then there's the excitement about it and the possibilities that it presents, especially if it can help report and get help on the rescue girls. <laughs> It begins to rain heavily and we have to meet the next day. In the morning we just come from Kabengurie and was the port and the network was quite stable. But the further we go into Kachaliba, you can see the network completely disappears. I'm supposed to meet Susan today morning and I cannot reach her on phone. Completely lost the network connection. So it makes me wonder uh, what people actually go through if they have to report either a to the FGM or even just have to get assistance if the connectivity keeps being unstable the way it is. So we still have how long, how far do we have to go to get that? 12 kilometers, take probably an hour. So, and um, now the connectivity is back. So let me just try to get in touch with her again so that she knows that we are still on our way. When we meet, Susan tells me that just after we left last evening, she received very disturbing news on the local community radio. Before I leave, I ask if this app can help her once it goes live. Unaona chenye tasaidika kwa hiyo teknolojia ukitumia uki hii mbinu eh hata mwenye wako huko ajui nini kwa inaendelea lakini anastukia huko kwa huko kwa sera sasa wanauliza na ile shida yake kama jana wakashika huyo tukiakuwa na hii tupike hivi sio mama pia alitumia simu simu ikaenda ikarudi ikaenda ikakuwa imeokoa unaona hii sasa ingekuwa wanamwandikia tu chief message na inaisha hivyo na police Ifo tu na ina inakuisha hivyo. Wanaenda tu haraka ku. Na hiyo kitu kikuja bandi itasaidia. Likewise, Mr. Mashar believes it can make a difference, especially educating more people. Yeah, it will help because now you know once they get the information and uh, they use uh, the, the 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 feedback from the community, they use even the um, community health volunteers, which are always uh, at the ground. They can give the information and then we can handle it and solve the problem. Once the act is removed, we'll be able to do it in the best possible way, which is uh, one of the ways being medicalization.
Outside the courtroom, anti-FGM activists held silent protest, flashing anti-FGM placards. The group is keen on having the anti-FGM law passed in 2011 upheld. It is the law that protects everybody in Kenya. And that law should remain to make sure that our girls are not mutilated. I feel that it's timely that this doctor went to the court because medicalization right now uh, in Kenya is on the rise. This means that there are so many medical practitioners out there, not only doctors, but also nurses, midwives, and other people in that field that are carrying out FGM. So it's the high time that this case was um, followed up to the end, and then we came, we, we finalized it once and for all, and we made sure that all the doctors are aware that FGM is not good and no one is doing it behind the doors. I can challenge you, man. Check. It's a very small injury. <laughs> it is not FGM the way it is done, say, in Northeastern province or whatever. This one is a little injury to transit. So no one does FGM to their girls, knowing that they will bleed to death or they will suffer. When they came and started campaigning about FGM, they came and told the community members, when you do FGM, girls will have excessive breathing. They will have HIV, they might contract HIV and AIDS. Uh, they will do this. So that negative, that negativity that came with that campaign, the people who came before us, made the communities to devise a way of going around this. So they thought, if I take my girl to the hospital then, how will I avoid excessive breathing? There will be no excessive pain. The doctor will take care of this. You see? Girls, yeah, who have gone through FGM and they've made it in life. And there are very many who have not gone through it and they're really a problem to us. We need to see how we change the information. We focus more on the positive messaging, like giving positive examples of girls who have not been cut, how they have been able to succeed in location. Tony Mwebe runs the Men and FGM campaign both online and offline. Up until 2012, he had no understanding of what FGM was. This was until he worked with refugees living in urban areas. I met these men, the Somali men refugees, and they were able to share their experiences with FGM. One man in particular touched me. Up to date, I remember the story. He shared how he lost his wife and a child a day later due to complications of FGM. I found out that men also have stories on FGM, but because of their ego as men, they're not able to bring it out. They don't talk about it, but most of the men suffer silently. You know, if a woman is suffering from fistula, for example, this drains the resources of the family because at the end of the day, everyone has to chip in economically to make sure that this lady is treated. You cannot allow your loved one to suffer. Whatever is existing in terms of the application that they have developed, I've seen the APK. Uh, a lot of work still needs to be done because we need an application that is integrated to multiple platforms, especially if you want to solve a problem like FGM in Kenya. Developers' point of view, the user interface needs to be appealing to the user, it needs to be attractive. Then secondly, the number of steps that users go through. For example, if I want to give a feedback, I give my feedback, but I'm still redirected to the Gmail. What if I don't have a Gmail account? When the functionality of it and the content that it has, it's not too much. It is just enough for the users that are intended to use it. For instance, uh, if you're the victim here and you need to report a case, you find it where you can report, you can report that case and it just goes well. And on the other hand, let's say I'm not directly affected with that issue, but I need to know more about it. How does it happen? Where does it take place? What are the effects? I can also learn from the application. The developers of this application need to choose a specific task which they want to solve. You cannot do everything. Even if it's to just identify a location or create a command system where these people can be rescued, that can work. 
However, if you look at it in terms of picking so many things and the logistics around it generally will render that application useless by the end of the day. Central shouldn't be that everyone doesn't have a smartphone. Rolling out both the SSD and the application would work. In Kenya, for example, we have between 30 to 40 million mobile phones. Close to 20 million of that number are smartphones. Now, mobile applications will only run on smartphones. Now, another thing that you need to consider probably is whether the victims, if you look at the areas they live in, the villages and all that, whether the victims of, this, uh, of such activities or whatever you need to achieve, where they have the capacity to purchase the products which are mobile phones, smartphones, which can run these applications. And if they are not able to buy them, who else is able to buy them? In Tanzania, Crowd2 Map, founded by Janet Chapman in the Tanzanian Development Trust, is improving the maps of rural Tanzania to fight FGM. Having better maps helps activists find the most remote villages where girls are at risk of being cut. The team is also working with Ushahidi so that other girls can report the incident using the platform. The biggest issue is reporting as at now in most remote areas of Kenya. This will not improve in the app. That means we need to do more sensitization down there, not only on the application but also on the other available channels of reporting, like the chiefs, like other activists and organizations working on the ground there. Tumecharibisana all these people to be able to get rescued. This app has to be installed in every rescue center in Kenya and police stations and the listing of all these other rescue centers in Kenya, all the police stations in Kenya. It's going to be pretty hard engaging with them. When these girls are really at risk and there's nothing else to do, then we need to rescue them. Then how do they interact with the community after that? Are you going to take, to take them away from the family or how are you going to do it? When it comes to funding, the developers have to ensure that all donations are well accounted for and monitored by the right people. Kenya has made great strides. In 1998, the national prevalence of FGM was at 38%. In 2013, it was at 21% according to the KDHS 2014 survey. But we still have a problem. We have communities which have prevalence as high as 94% among the Somalis, 86% among the Sapporos. We have the Maasai at 78%. We have the Meru's and the Mbos at 31%. This means that there are many communities which are way above the national prevalence. I believe this means that we need to focus more resources to those communities and ensure that the prevalence comes down as a whole for the whole country. Back in Kisumu, the restorers are racing against time. They know the application holds many possibilities. So, Susan, don't give up. We are making it SMS-based, where you can just send short code messages, just the way we check for our um, credit balance on phone. So it will just be something short and interactive, and at the end of it all, you can get help. Shida ni wasichana wenzao wako naye. Kwa sababu msichana mwenye wako Nairobi hata yeye ndio hapa. Tunajiwanga msichana ni msichana. Unaona? Na wenye wako shule ni wale wale tu. Lakini wameokoa sasa mambo path kubwa sana kwa Kenya. Si hata hapa kwa ngelabi yake. Penye hii mambo ya agenda bado inaendelea FGM bado inaendelea. Wamesaidia na waendelee. Wasichoke. Waendelee na pia hawa wajaribu kusini ni watu ya university. Wajaribu siku nyingine high schools. <laughs> It's not about the technology, but the lives that can be changed by it. 
It's about how people understand female genital mutilation and want to get involved, victim or not. Dorcas Wangira, KTN News.